Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman, learn some catch you two grappling, some Greco-Roman wrestling, some all grappling, you gotta put it all together. Talking about uh, Greco and killing the underhook and snapping a guy down, getting that snap down to front headlock position. Me and Dave here, if we're just hand fighting, we're fighting out here, I'm just gonna look to snap him, okay? Now I can snap him, club him here to the far armpit, which is what most people do, or you can snap and bowling ball him to the other direction, which really discombobulates him and he's not, like, if you snap a guy a regular way, a good wrestler's gonna just take that to shoot in on a double leg. So sometimes I do snap a guy, if we're hand fighting, we're coming in here, boom, I got this, but other times I'm gonna snap him and come here. And from there I'm looking to chin grip and either T-Rex this arm or underhook for a cow catcher cobra neck crank. And snap the guy down. Then I'm gonna work from there on my front headlock, position stuff, chokes, everything else, okay? Um, in Greco, a guy is going to want a high underhook. He's going to shoot in here, and he's loading. His hips are under you, and he's going to drive in and get head position and be coming, 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 and looking for here. If he doesn't throw his wizard in, boom, I'm going to shut here and give him a ride. Okay, from the side, from the back, duck under, whatever the situation is, because he didn't throw his wizard, his overhook in. But you guys got to know that this position, okay, uh, a few months ago in Thailand, I was training with Mirak Bari, Greco-Roman champion, 135 yoked. Kilogram, 135 kilogram, like 275 pounds of pure muscle. He gets this on you, sits her under, he's driving with this leg, we're hand fighting, we're in here, in that position. He's got a lot of options. Okay? At some point if the hand fighting goes back, boom, boom. Okay? And MMA you can use that position great to drive to the cage and meet the liver from there. So you have to know how to kill that position. So if Dave comes in with a high underhook here, and he's in here, number one, I want to put a tight whizzer in, hand or fist, make space. I can monitor with my knee and bump, and we can be fighting here this game. And I'd like to get head position back and drive in here on him. Okay, so number one is that. If he comes in on me, he gets that big underhook here, I got to be fighting inside position here. Head control and whizzer. Arm control, whether we're looking for bicep or wrist, we're going to both be fighting for inside position head position and make space with that tight wizard. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if a guy's head is ever down, there's a huge difference between here and here. You always wanna wrestle with a strong neck. It doesn't look like much, it's only like two inches, but it makes a huge difference in my structure. So, if Dave comes in, but his head's kinda low, which is good for driving, and it's good for a certain amount of control, but if I can clear this arm, I can roll it out of that C grip, I can then snap him down, because his head's low. So even if he's driving me in, I can take that energy and snap him here. Drive back and snap from there. Over neck and cow catcher. Okay, and all kinds of stuff from there. You want to be able to snap and move and go from there. So one more time. He's got the position, and we're here, and he's driving into me, driving into me, driving into me. Boom. See? And now I can work whatever I'm gonna work from there. Okay? Um, some people have a Big, huge guy can control that wrist. So if I can't clear this, and he's this, but his head's kind of low, I can take this wizard out, limp arm this, and club him, and snap here, okay? So, give me some energy. So he's coming, 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 coming. Here, looking for that turn right away, or snap down, cow catcher, whatever. So, guys, that's how you have to kill that underhook, above and beyond that, always someone's got underhooks and fighting or wrestling, or it's MMA, or it's a grappling tournament. I got this, okay, I got the elbow crank, John Jones style, here, here. If I want to take him down, I can sweep or knee bump. Or here, wrestling, I feel it, there's a V-arm lock elbow crank, I can head tilt him and take him back from that. Uh, also, if he's kind of in here, but Narrow on underhook. Like I managed to block the underhook out with my my C grip. So we're fighting with pummeling, whatever. He's kind of digging that in. If I can keep him blocked out, now I can also do an elbow break. MMA, boom. So I can turn him. I can snap that elbow or the forearm, compound fracture, put it into a hit. So you guys should be aware of this stuff too. Boom, boom. Or elbow crank stuff. Boom, boom. Sorry. If it's uh, deeper, then it's, if it's deeper, then it's 
elbow crank in. Or elbow crank, get him up on his tiptoes, right here. And then maybe I still got the solution. Okay. So anyway guys, kill that underhook. You gotta know the position. This is simple stuff, stuff that all grapplers should right here. Okay. And now there's a couple different things I can do in this position. If I, I know my stuff, okay, and I have good strong hips and basics and fundamentals of my spine, I can lift my head up, I can turn his head sideways and do a neck crank and combination neck crank and choke here, like a neck break position. If you see his head here, I'm trapping it with my ribs and I'm lifting. Alright, he's here, I can go here, I'm going to turn and do a neck break position, be careful with this one, this is more catch wrestling style and like Russian combative style, okay? I'm going to teach you everything about advanced guillotines, you're going to learn all kinds of different guillotine positions uh, and different ways, variations of the choke. So pay attention to all kinds of grips. I'm going to start standing, then I might go to the, the like wall cage. Uh, taking it to the ground, then I go from the knees, I might show different positions. Uh, we're just going to talk about grips. So we're talking about everything other than a basic wrist blade of forearm guillotine. So number one is going to be if I snap this guy down or wrestling, boom, I snap him down, I get a chin grip. So from here, this position is usually where I'm going to handle all my kinds of guillotines. From the feet, or I snap him down, we go to the ground, to the front sprawl, front turtle position. Okay. So right now I'll just show from the feet. If I snap them down, I got a chin grip, 10 finger guillotine. There I'm up here just for visuals. So I'm gonna just rotate this in and I crush them there, okay? So here, and here's just a five finger guillotine. I'd roll this in, but I don't have enough control over his body. Here I'd have to do 10 finger and there. So I'm really rolling this kind of under, and it's not really the throat. I'm really rolling it to like the um, tongue area, like under the mandible. It sucks, it's really bad. So this is a 10 finger guillotine, guys. You just you just cup it like a cup and saucer and you roll it up. Okay, next would be a power assist guillotine. Power assist guillotine is instead of this grip, or even if you have this grip, you can rotate your hand underneath, turn up the volume, palm up, and push it up. Now this is really, really nasty. Uh, good for standing, good on the ground, good on the knees. Um, John Jones did this to Ryan Bader on the ground and he did it to choke out Lyoto Machida on the feet. So here, this is how John Jones does it. Okay, so even if you have this grip, especially against the cage and stuff, or you just snap the guy to the front turtle position, I can rotate it up. So there's power assist guillotine. Then there's uh, figure four style catch wrestling guillotine. Not so good standing, better on the ground, but I'm just gonna show standing so you learn the whole, the positions. I'm gonna palm strike this shoulder, push it back, and I'm gonna figure four here, and I'm gonna choke right there. Okay, similar to the face crank, uh, not a guillotine, but face crank slash neck breaker right there. That's a free pop. Okay. <laughs> um, similar. Okay, but the first one was on the, the throat. So that's a figure four. And then um, there's high elbow. Now you can do high elbow from this grip. I don't have long arms, so I'm not great at a high elbow. Or you can go to uh, a reverse butterfly or a pretzel grip with the thumbs out or with the thumbs in, perhaps. Because uh, I'm not long elbow. I feel like I can actually get my elbow deeper over his shoulder if I do a reverse grip. And we've seen both ways um, on the ground and standing up in the UFC and prelims there's been a reverse grip. Uh, there was at the last one uh, fighting championships, there, or one fighting, there was, a, uh, um, there was a high elbow as well, pushed against the cage, kind of standing against the cage, driving in. So I could go here and I could throw this over. Okay. Or I could go palm to palm over. See, I feel that's way better, tighter, obviously. Or I could do it with thumbs. I'll do that one. I could do it with thumbs if you prefer. I think I like the thumbless grip. But I could go here. here. Now, what's great about those is you don't need, it's the only guillotine you don't really need any kind of guard. I could fall aside now, Marcelo Gracia style. I can get a scramble, and I'm still going to choke you out in the scramble as long as I keep this blocked out over the shoulder. Now, one of the... Uh, Big advantage is standing up to so this one is typical guillotine standing up defense is hangman. If I do a high elbow, try and throw that over, you can't, and I choke him up. Okay, so there's the high elbow guillotine. So these are all different guillotines. Above and beyond that, there is the catcher arm through guillotine, which you can hit from standing if I stuff this through. 
So guys, you gotta learn all the different guillotines. If that arm's through, Ryan Bader style, I can hop this to a reverse lockdown from standing. So anytime I got a snap down on the guy, I can knee his head if it was MMA, and I can bump this around, and I can get to here. And if I'm around the corner on the guy, I can jump here, throw in a reverse lockdown, boom, and now I just stretch him out. Okay? So that is a catch your arm through guillotine from standing that you can take to the ground. Uh, another one I could take to the ground, you can take high elbow to the ground uh, on transition off his takedown or, or whatever, or jump to it if you, if you had good arms for the high elbow. Uh, I'm going to show another one, come to the cage over here. Guys, uh, just do your best to pay attention to the grips. This is uh, the similar reverse butterfly grip or pretzel grip you might want to call it, standing up, but with the arm in. So it's similar to how I did the high elbow but I'm gonna do it with the arm in. So guys, pay attention, one arm in, one arm out. Here, so I got this, okay? So now that I got this, I can actually, it's the one thing you can actually do to half guard. Of course, you have to have that same side half guard, not opposite, like most people do, and then it's never really a danger of a guillotine. But if it's the same side, what well, Julio Negro's got it in Pride D4, but this way, it actually becomes a legit submission against someone good, if you have this reverse grip. Okay, so now I can fall in here and I can pull them and stretch them out. Is that a tap? Yeah, a tap. Okay, and if I could, I'd get a lockdown in there and I can really stretch them. Okay, so I can throw that lockdown and stretch them out. This becomes a totally legitimate guillotine from half guard. So if we're in a scramble on the ground and he's passing whatever, but I happen to be over here, like maybe he just stuffs this knee. I can switch to the reverse grip and he stuffs that knee and he thinks he's just passing. I throw in a lockdown and now I got this reverse grip, he's dead. Okay? So this grip, nasty. With the arm in, you can actually do an arm in guillotine from half guard. You don't have to have full guard because of the grip difference. It shoves it in a circle. The neck. So, um, these are all kinds of cool different guillotines. Now guys, pay attention, please. Learn the grips, and then we'll go over them from the knees, uh, from the front headlock position. Okay, a lot of times if I just snap the guy down or he just tried a double leg, these guillotines, some of these are very good to go to right off the bat. Because he's in wrestling mode, boom, and I sprawled on him. Or I snapped him down. Now instead of trying to do something else fancy, just kill him quick with a quick guillotine. Because I have body weight control over him, and that's what's gonna isolate his head and his throat for the kill, is that I'm on top of him, I'm over him. So let's say I just scrolled or I just snapped him down, if I go to that 10 finger right here, but I stuff his head to the center of my chest, boom, he's dead, okay? Because he can't go anywhere. I'm just cupping and lifting, but my body is trapping his head. So instead of trying it off on the side here, I'm gonna just shuck his head to the center, cup and go. Okay, and you see I can make it even worse uh, if, if I pull my knees in, so I, I go here, yeah, go kind of low if you can, put it in knees. So I'm going to put it to the center, and then I got my cup, and now I'm going to slide my knees in and compress his neck. Here. Okay, you got to watch a really strong wrestler taking you down, possibly, but if you do this kind of slide in your knees finish, it, it's booing his neck into his chest. So I'm here, and instead of just this, if I go slide in and I go here, it's a much worse compression, right? Okay. So there's the uh, 10 finger, which you can make a five finger. I'm getting really good at five finger guillotines from now. So five finger is just one handed, one handed guillotine. Next is just sprawled on the guy, just snapped him down, boom, power assist. Just quick kill him, just, just lift up to the six. <laughs> just extend and, and yank the guy up, but keep some body control over him. So that's just a horribly quick kill from here, and no one does it from the front turtle, front headlock position. Um, that figure four, catch wrestling style, that figure four one works better. I just snap them down here, come here, boom. Okay? So this one works better from on the ground, on the knees, in the front turtle. Um, High elbow. So I'm here, this grip, 
Or better yet, I like this grip now. I like this reverse grip. I throw this over. Here. What's great is if we scramble and he comes around, whatever, he's still getting choked out on the way. You okay? You know, it's kind of slow. It'll toughen you up. To uh, try to pass the side mount this time. We'll see. If, it, if I can keep this over his shoulder, so I'm here, sprawled out, whatever, I go here, reverse off his chin. I like that chin strap right away. Here. Throw this over, let's say he starts to pass. I'm going really slow with pressure. He's passing now. But because this is still over his shoulder blade, I got the tap out with no guard. Legs are not involved. So um, that's certainly a huge advantage to that guillotine. Now, I talked about it before. If I got that arm in and I'm trying to go for that, a regular arm and guillotine, boom, I go here. Let's stuff that knee because I didn't get it all the way through. Uh-oh, it's probably no good, right? Here, while I'm doing all this squeezing stuff, you see, switch your grip to the reverse grip. It's not that hard. Right now, I'm double palm down, if you can see in here. And then I switch, throw in my lockdown, stretch them out. Okay? Reverse butterfly grip, or some people call it pretzel grip. Um, are there any? I forgot. Catch your arm through guillotine. So... Boom, we're resting. Snap him down, wham! I'm here. I talked about this in another video. I'm gonna try to Schultz choke him. Schultz choke him, I can't get him. He's gonna drive in, try and take him out. Oh, I come in here, and trap him. There's my catcher arm through. Guillotine, which is very different, in my opinion, than the other ones. Uh, it's the one I really feel comfortable going to my back end to get someone good, because I have good control. It's a quick tap. And even if for some reason, which the other day I had trouble tapping out my big Kazakhstan guy, because he had got his elbow to my hip bone instead of right on the side of my ribs, he got his elbow to my hip bone. So even if he defended, I pull this one, uh, whatever, with the arm through here, I have two videos on this one already. And whether it's this grip, because I tried Schultz choking first for this grip, I'm here, for whatever reason, my knee's not deep enough, my shin shield on this other side isn't deep enough going to the other side. Relax, relax. Yeah, and he's he start yeah start to go. Man, I can bail. I can bail on this one. So that's why you see guys like alpha male fighters use that in the UFC a lot, and it's a very quick kill. So um, there's a whole lot about these advanced guillotines that people don't fully understand. And then I'm gonna do one more that we didn't talk about before. Let's go standing and we'll roll around. I don't know if this is a ninja choke or a front naked choke or my combination of the above, which I think it is, which in my opinion becomes a guillotine. Instead of a front naked choke trying to just chop down on his neck, which would be something like this and grabbing and then trying to scissor down to make pressure. I don't think this is that strong, though certainly can work. By arching here and stuff, that can certainly work, so there's another one, okay? But this would be better. If I, and I, if I had longer arms, it would be even better. If I stuff through and try to get my elbow down here, ninja choke style, here, okay? But I'm on this other side, and I manage to attach. Now I'm here. Now what I do is I finish it the way I teach a rear naked, is I pinch my elbows together. So now this becomes a really horrible, just like I teach a rear naked. I teach a rear naked differently than a lot of other people. I'm not teaching this, I teach compression first and elbows together. You see he's almost out, and then I just add a little bit. So I make it a structural thing first by pinching my elbows together. We do the same thing from the front. So I'm in here, I come in deep, I come here and I pinch those elbows together. So, um, I'm in that front headlock position or even in a dog fight. I could be in a dog fight position. And I'm in here, and he's here, and we're going, whatever. I can come over. Here. Now, I might be able to get the tap right here, or even if we roll, he's going to roll to defend. I might stay on top and roll. And I can keep it here, I can keep it here, I can keep it here. And if I don't lose my grip. Uh, kind of similar to how uh, Ellenberger got Josh Kasha. Uh, one from the front turtle there. So boom, we're down, so I, here. I go from here. I'm gonna shoot this deep. Try and get your elbow like a V down to the bottom of his neck. Okay? Come on top, front naked choke style. 
and I'll pinch the elbows together and curl that in. So now he's getting it on the arteries and everywhere, a full compression. Uh, snapping a guy down and going right into submission. The MMA game is advancing. It's not so controlling on the ground and staying there. It's transitions, man. And you gotta learn how to wrestle, catch wrestle, wrestle into your catch or submission. And that's what we're talking about. I'm gonna be clubbing him down with the snap down and then going into submission too. So, being Johnny here is a good fighter. Just knocked this guy out his first fight. Congratulations. And we're gonna be in here, we're gonna be hand fighting. And then I'm looking to snap him down. So I'm gonna club him, bam, and then I'm gonna shut him down on the ground. Okay, once I'm here right away, I'm going to turn the corner and I'm going to tell Catcher Cobra Neck Crank. Okay? So we have other videos showing all the different submissions, but if we're here in a fight, whatever, and I pull on my step down, bam, I'm jumping down, I'm going to turn the corner, and there's my cow uh, to the Cobra Neck Crank, or half hatch. So, um, sometimes if you practice hitting this fast, if you practice it from stepping down, you'll be surprised how many good guys you can get with it. Now, it's not legal in most grappling tournaments that play pansy rules, but you guys should know what's up. If sometimes you don't get this, uh, this time let's say he's got a high underhook, I'm fighting in here, he's jacking me up like a Greco Roman guy, I might club him with this hand after I'm making spins, he's driving into me, I club him, man, I got here. I snap him down, boom, to the corner. Let's say I couldn't get the submission, I can't quite get the neck break, I might come around, dip my head and shoulder to the ground, and turn it into a mounted five finger guillotine. Okay, so if you're ever about to lose the chin strap for the cobra neck crank, you can mount for a five finger guillotine. Uh, besides that, we'll play that same game again. I screwed up, he's got a high underhook, he's got head position, he's jacking me up. Look at my other video about killing the underhook. I'm in here, making space, we're both hand fighting, hand position fighting. He's got head position, he'd be monitoring my leg, right leg. Right, right. He'd be driving me in here to the cage in MMA. I got trying to fight him back and head fight, whatever. If I can't, get back inside, head position in, and kill his underhook, then I might have to club him, especially when he's driving into me. So if he's driving into me, I can whip this hand, boom, snap him here. Okay, I'm gonna snap him down, and then coming in, 10 finger guillotine. Okay, so roll up 10 finger guillotine. Look at all my guillotine variations to follow up this video. Okay, another option is snapping him down, and going to the power assist guillotine. So we're here, wherever again, boom, I got him, I snap him down. Right there, this way, this side. So right here, I snap him down, I got my chin strap, and right away, I just slide it through to the wrist, and I go for the quick kill, power assist key. Team. See, I'm trapping his head and body with my chest. So as soon as I get that snap down, we're gonna go. Do you mind if I carry one more time with it? Okay, so I'm here, boom. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> you missed the angle. It's too fast, I'll just go slow. So his head was in my ribs under the armpit. I shuck it to the center of my chest, to my solar plexus. Whether I go for the 10 finger, uh, maybe get low. Okay, yeah. So either for the 10 finger, I come in, I hop my knees in, and I roll this in, and I fold his back. Or for the power assist, I shove it through, and I can even post, but he might roll his back if I gotta know I gotta follow it. Or here, and I just, Quick kill him here. Trap his head somewhere. Here, power says John Jones grip. There. Or even if he had posted and he turned. Go ahead, you go to your back. So release pressure. I can still follow and stay on it. Sorry. Okay, so that's the power system. Sorry, one more time, one more, a couple more. Okay. Um, next would be high elbow. So we're gonna fight as soon as he, say he shot him. Go ahead, shoot him. Bam, I'm swallowing the guy. Okay, so then I go right into my 10 finger or my power assist or even a high elbow. I'll go high elbow this time. So I swallowed, he shot. I'm here. I shuck it to the center of my chest, maybe. I switch my grip to a reverse gable or a pretzel grip or a reverse pretzel grip. And I'm going to throw this elbow of Marcelo Garcia style over the back. Now I don't have long arms. But right here, I can tap him out. Boom. Or if he rolls. I gotta keep the pressure, go with him, maybe here. See, he's tapping all along the way. So with the high elbow, you gotta be willing to scramble and roll with it. Not great, because I have short, stocky arms. But if you have long, thin arms, high elbow's gonna work even better for you. So, uh, one more on that. I'm here, and then I shoot it through, and I switch my grip from a regular guillotine-type grip 
to either power assist or I go reverse. I invert my hand and then I act like I throw him an elbow strike to cut a guy down the forehead. And I throw the elbow over the top. And now here, boom. Now even if he's passing, if I screw up, driving me a little bit there. Oh, he's passing and I got the half guard, no guard. I got the elbow over the back and I can still get the high of the guillotine. Only guillotine with absolutely no guard, you can still get it. So, guys, the point is, wrestle, snap a guy down, spawn on a guy, and instead of just taking the back for the rear naked choke, that everyone knows to defend hooks and rear nakeds, look for the submissions in the front headlock position. Cobra neck crank, I got a whole, whole bunch of them, but these, these three guillotines, the cobra neck crank especially, are quick, quick, quick kills from that chin strap right away. Uh, my ideas on the front headlock position, there's a lot of submissions. The other day I taught uh, cow catcher cobra neck cranks, which is one of my go-to moves, rolling cobra neck crank. There's at least five different guillotines, face crank and neck cranks from there. There's a whole lot of submissions. Uh, but I'm going to talk about one particular series that no one else has put together yet. And that is Schultz choke to anaconda choke or Peruvian necktie or to catch your arm through guillotine. They're all related positions and no one's really chained them together before that I'm aware of or when the guy is built weird and doesn't tap to one or when the guy flattens out to defend. How to transition these together. So let's say that I'm wrestling here with Steve and he's got a good Greco guy and he's jacking me up and whatever. Boom, I'm going to snap him down. Bam. Snap this guy down. And now we're going to start from here. I got my chin strap, my chin grip, and I got, and I got uh, my T-Rex on his arm here. Now I could go to that Cobra neck crank right away, but let's say I feel that he's open here, he's not getting hand defense, and I shoot this arm through. Especially if you have long arms. I am a short arm guy. So like Anaconda isn't good for me, know that when I show it. But especially if you are a long arm guy, you're gonna love this series. So I'm here, I shoot this in. Number one is attempt to do a Schultz front headlock choke. Palm the palm grip, bump this arm across, and tripod up. Now I'm gonna put my head in the hole and I'm gonna keep weight above his shoulder blades and I'm gonna kinda guillotine with my lat muscles and pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and drive in and drive in and drive in until he tap. Okay? Now some people, uh, the way they're built, maybe don't tap great to this. It's not a choke, some people can learn it right away and some people have problems with it. It takes a lot of feel. Uh, very few people have taught it before and at seminars and it's one that takes feel more than other chokes. So, uh, but anyway, it's the first one to attempt in my, my opinion in this series. I go here, I go through, I'm gonna bump this arm across like so, really jack it across, tripod up, put my head in the well, but keep some shoulder weight above his back here, shoulder blade area, here, and hold. Okay. Now, again, if the guy's tough, pulling his arm back, defending, or he flattens out to defend, I might transition to one of the other chokes in the series that are all related because of positioning. Uh, and, and I'm not great at these because I don't have long arms. Peruvian and, and Anaconda, I'm not great at. Next, I, and I'm doing these now from this grip, or you could switch to the traditionally, a lot of these are done this way. But I'm finding I don't even need to adjust my grip. I can stick with this palm to palm grip and that's gonna help me keep this arm across. So let's say I have someone that doesn't tap to this. Right away I can switch to Peruvian necktie. Step over the head, or better yet if I can catch him, and if you have long legs, step over the the arm and the shoulder. But I can often only get to here. So I'm in here, I'm shoulder choking, I come here, I sit back, I throw this leg over him, and I'm extending. This is the worst thing to ever get tapped out in. I've gotten tapped twice live with this after about 25 minutes. When I was a purple belt from two black belt guys, managed to catch me after cooking me. This is really bad because not only am you pulling with your arms and your lats, but you can back extension and you can leg extension. So it's really the worst kind of hangman technique that there is. Again, I'm here, and I step over, and then I'm coming up, I throw this over, and I didn't trap them very good here, but I can often choke very well. If you get this thrown over the back, higher the leg, the better, so he can't really roll. Okay, I'll have uh, Dave come. Now Dave, the way he's built, I actually have trouble Schultz choking him. So that's one reason to know 
to defend this. So he comes in, I sprawl, I'm here, I get this across, I'm here, I start Schultz choking. Now I'm gonna come up, throw this over, and there is the Peruvian necktie right away. Really, 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 really uh, nasty. You okay? One more time. Here, bumping across, Schultz choking, trying, he's not tapping on this. Throw this over, come here. Okay. So, uh, sorry. One more time. If uh, someone defends an anaconda or a Schultz choke by flattening out, you can go to the Peruvian as well. So even Marcelo Grossia teaches this against an anaconda. Could be the same thing. I've had people do it uh, instinctively against a Schultz choke. So, if I'm having trouble on the Schultz choke or an anaconda, and he sprawls face down and spreads his elbows, switch back to that palm to palm grip if you're an anaconda, or here, either way, or keep it if you're in a Schultz choke. Come over, step over, down, and trap. Okay? If I had longer legs and more flexible legs, it'd be even worse. So, know that. Next uh, is anaconda. So, I'm not great at it, I don't have long arms, but if I was shot through and I wanted to throw an anaconda in here, boom, shoot it deep, come here, roll, I like to roll all the way. Some people you can tell right through by supermaning your lungs and pulling in, and if not, keep turning in that circle, hook one of those legs and fold in his head in and compress him. Gokar Shevichin can get this on the back without a leg hook simply because his grip is so strong, he's 5'8 and a bull by doing that and filling the lungs up. So you don't always have to have the leg, but against most people you will. So I'm here, I shoot in deep, I log roll him, hook him, tap him, and there. Uh, quickly, let me talk about anaconda defense because I have no other videos on it. If Dave throws me an anaconda here, I want to keep my elbow across and I want to block his hips. So he rolls me through or I feel the grip. Block those hips out, form a palm here and form. And now try to bring this elbow across. And he's going to climb, 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 and I'm going to spin like the hand of a clock. Spin, spin, all day long, we're going to spin, 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 spin until I get something. So until I can get out of it, obviously, transition. So you want to, don't let him get your leg. Post, forearm, and palm strike. And, and keep his hips away from your hips and legs. Um, you can also anaconda guillotine. Uh, I'm not great at it. Dave's not great at it yet. But I'll, I'll show that, uh, let Dave show that really quick if you don't mind grabbing the anaconda grip. Charles Oliver's done this twice in the UFC. If he shoots a deep in anaconda grip, he's going to pull guard on me. If you pull full guard or shoot, shoot. Here, I'm across. And extend me with this. Okay. So you can get full guard or kind of shin seal the cross and extend it. Uh, Phil Davis is not the only guy to win with two anacondas in the UFC. Charles Oliveira is anaconda guillotine style. Next, if the guy, again, isn't tapping into that shoulder choke, let's always build off of that. That's the first thing to go to from a wrestling perspective. If the guy's defending or I can't get him, can't get my grip quite right, Whatever it is, the next thing I can go to is a catcher arm through guillotine, which is a very special guillotine because the arm's trapped on the other side of the body. So it's different from all the other advanced guillotines. It really is. So I'm here, and I'm here, boom, and I'm tripoding up, whatever. See this space? I'm going to fill it with my knee, trap them, and extend it. Okay, I got his arm across. I have two other videos on a catcher arm through guillotine. Ryan Bader did it from half guard, loose, but if you put a lockdown in, it's even better. I have a video on that. Or you can extend out this way. Just one more time. I'm here. Swallow them out. I got my grip. I'm trying this. I can either shoot to the Peruvian. I showed that earlier. Or this is the one guillotine I feel comfortable going on my back end. I can ride, ride, drive in, drive in, drive in, drive in, drive in. He's going to want to wrestle me, come back in, drive in there. Slide your knee in the hole and extend them out. And quick tap. You see this one more and more 
and high level MMA in the UFC and whatnot. So these positions, these submissions should get chained together and they're not. So anytime you're through, don't just think. We do other stuff with that chin grip and switching to uh, power assist guillotine, figure four front face lock, neck crank, figure four guillotine, uh, high elbow guillotine, other stuff. But if you're in this position where you shoot your arm through, all four of these, five of these, uh, are options that you can go to and you chain them off of each other. So if he goes flat, prove your necktie. If you can't get him the shoulder stroke, prove your necktie, or switch to the anaconda, or go right away to the catcher arm through guillotine. Uh, anyway. Okay, next guys, from the front sprawl position, you manage to defend that double leg takedown. You're sprawled on top of them or you're already in a front headlock position. Go to the Cobra neck crank. I love this thing. I attack a lot of guys with it. It wastes very little energy and you tap quite a few guys with it. Okay, so from a front turtle position, I a lot of times just rest with, with my hand cupping his chin. That's good neck control, good head control. And then when I can, I'm going to underhook on this far side. From here, I'm going to throw this hand towards his back, towards his back shoulder blade. Step my left foot up, and I want to try and turn in a tight circle, hip to hip, to rotate him over, using this as a leverage, okay, as a thrower, and trying to turn my left hip, try and turn that all the way towards his hip. Spin him, keep his head off the ground, rotate his chin, and bring it up to his head. Okay, just like a Mark Coleman headlock neck crank, but with his chin turned way sideways, then you're compressing, so it's both a neck crank and a choke. You got them hooked this way. But the best thing is, I don't have long arms. It's not like a Darce choke or a Marsh choke or an anaconda, rolling anaconda choke. It doesn't waste a lot of energy for me to squeeze and try and get it in deep. If I was long like Kendall Grove, that's easy. But if you're short and stubby like me, this is something very simple to do because you're just, you're not wasting any energy. I'm in here a lot, and all I got to do is I fight a lot to get this chin. If I get a chin grip, here, maybe I'm hitting him. If it was pride rules, maybe, or the street, I'm leaning him in the head. But I'm going to underhook here, throw him to the side, get that side mount, pull that chin out, and compress his head up to his chest. I don't like to settle the guy and then bring him back up to waste energy. Get used to going slow with this because it's dangerous, but compress him right away. And uh, Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman talking front headlock, learn some catch jiu-jitsu. Okay, I've been covering the front headlock, all kinds of guillotine variations, the whole series with the anaconda, the Peruvian necktie, uh, catch your arm through guillotine, all that. So look up those videos and how to snap someone down, how to kill the underhook, that video as well. So I've had three videos on the front headlock series already. Now uh, I'm going to talk uh, cow catcher, cobra neck crank. I already have a video with my friend Ryan Bo. Uh, used to be no number one ranked shooto fighter in Japan, uh, A ranked, and um, he's now uh, Team Noguera Dubai MMA head coach. So look up that video. I'm not going to cover the main one too often. We're wrestling here. I got my fighter Hussein. If I manage to snap him down, boom, here, this ball him out right away. I go to the cobra neck crank, here, boom, and I tap him out. Okay. If you want to learn the typical cow catcher cobra neck crank, that's what this is, just uh, look at that other video. I'm going to show more advanced stuff from there. Or if someone shoots on you, you sprawl and go to it right away. Go ahead, shoot. Boom, I sprawl. I got to my position. Boom, boom, turn the corner, and there's my neck crank. I don't let his weight settle down. I keep, I let gravity submit him. I got him turned out, and I let gravity and my chest weight submit him for me. Okay, now I'm going to talk more advanced stuff. Uh, if I snap him down, I get that position. What I'm trying to get grapplers to do is use it, not from a static position. Use this stuff in that the, the game's getting more advanced. Use it from standing to ground. Use it from the sprawl. Use it from the snap down. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's see. Let's say he's got a high underhook in here, and he's wrestling in. So I lift on this out, and I snap him down here, boom, and now I can go. So then I would tell catcher and turn. Okay. Um, let's say I try to, I try to get the cow catcher, but maybe he's a super strong guy, bigger than me. Let's pretend in a second. And he's wrestled his whole life. He knows a cow catcher. Wrestlers know that. That turn is, he, wrestler's not going to want to go to his back. That's a pinning combination. That's a pin. So, if I come here, got my chin up here, and I switch this underhook, if I try to do this, he's going to 
really go over his face and balance and wrestle this arm down to the ground. He, you might have a strong enough guy, you can't turn him. It's a very good turn. If you really go hip to hip and you practice it, it's very effective. But let's hypothetically say uh, you can't turn the guy. So he's going to lower his base and wrestle this arm down for me. Who said? Wrestle this arm down. Yeah. So he gives me that resistance. He's sprawling out. Yeah, keep turning his hip. He's moving, he's moving. And I can't get him. Take his energy and go the other way. Rolling cover neck. Rolling cover neck right there. So if you get someone who's like squaring up, squishing their base, and are uh, using like power and torque with their torso, uh, like a tight overhook against my underhook, to kill that cow catcher turn, do the rolling cobra neck crank instead. So, boom, I snap him down or I scroll, I go for it, and he's gonna, he's gonna defend, 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 he's moving out of it, take his energy and try to, which is this now, I'm trying to throw that out, don't down that down, boom, I dab my head in the hole, I roll him through, and then I got him there. So that's the rolling cobra neck crank. I've never seen a video online of that one. Uh, I've done it live once. Uh, before I got on my, one of my two hour videos, submission videos. Um, above and beyond this, I just started playing with this idea, so I might not be great at it yet, but thinking about how to use these in transitions for more advanced attacks is if I have this T Rex instead of an underhook, and I, like, see his arms kind of in right now instead of really based out, he's kind of in, instead of switching, where he's being just, maybe like he's a jiu-jitsu guy and he's just staying, he's like, oh man, I don't know wrestling, but if I stay tight, and he like T-Rex is here. He keeps his arms, his palms on his face. Some jiu-jitsu guys will do this, let's say that, but I got the chin grip already. So, I got the T-Rex here on the tricep. I'm gonna dive my arm through and go to his neck on the other side. I'm diving through, okay? He's diving through here and he's ducking my head in the hole roll him through as well. Now from there, it's Japanese neck tie season. Or, or uh, dust choke. So hook that leg and throw this to the chest. Yeah, you okay? You see? Stay yeah. a second. Yeah. So I got it into my solar plexus, and now I'm gonna crunch him. Okay, so I got a Japanese neck tie. Okay, so um, not that other people don't know Japanese neck tie dust chokes, but they're not using this wool to set it up, so I thought this was a cool idea. So bam, I swallow that, let's tap right away. And that's, I'm here, I, I swallow on him or I snap him down. Right here, I got my chin grip established. I throw this through the hole, then I roll. Here, then I'm gonna, boom, not here. Boom, and then I'm gonna that. Here, that. Or a dart stroke. So I'll go on the other side and show a dart stroke. So, um, come up again and shoot on me. Here, on this side, I'll just shoot on me. Here, bam, let's roll up here. Now, I'm gonna shoot this through. Boom, and roll. Look at that dark stroke. It's already there. I can either just shoot it here, like I did, because it was deep already, or I can grip here and stuff that head. Here, get my dark stroke right there. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, so this guy shoots on me. Small. Here, shoot the surf roll. Here, here, deep. Crab. I don't have long arms, but there's my dust. So this is stuff using these rolls that people haven't really done. So look at using that roll for the cobra neck crank if someone stops the cow catcher. It's the cobra neck crank, the typical way. And use that roll to set up your Japanese necktie. If you have long arms, I don't. Dar stroke, but the Japanese necktie is really nasty. Still kind of not great at it, but I've got it sometimes. I hope you guys enjoy it. Through, and I'm here, okay? I'm around his neck and I'm through the arm. What I do is I gable grip my hands, means palm to palm, okay? And what I'm gonna do is try and chop this elbow down to bump that arm across one. Now from there, what I do is I lat pull, pull in on like a choke, like a guillotine almost, Okay, and I'm going to tripod my feet up and I'm going to dive my head down into his armpit, put my head in the hole. Okay, this is the Dave Schultz front headlock choke. Used in wrestling to get around the rules to, oh, he's unconscious.
Because yeah. <laughs> when arms in, so it's legal in wrestling. Okay, so this Dave Schultz uses this, and then uh, a lot of Iowa Hawkeyes use this. Uh, uh, Dan Gable's guys from uh, University of Iowa. Isn't that what uh, Matt Hughes did, Ricardo, whatever Almeida. his name is? Ricardo Almeida, very good, sir, exactly that. Okay, so we snap them down or we defend the double or whatever in the turtle. Arm through, palm in the armpit, keep it tight, palm to palm. Chop this down, okay? Now I'm going to use my lats as the power and a little bit of biceps, yeah. like a lat pull, up, put my head in the hole. <laughs> Let's do a standing one. Now standing, just like our other chokes and neck cranks guys, the days of getting guys in guillotine standing, just in the open, even if you're Alistair Overeem big, that those days are over unless you put them against the cage and isolate their movement. They have too much free space, too much space, too much movement. Guillotines, even a standing crucifix, crucifix neck crank that no one's using, even though it's available a lot of times. Uh, Eddie Alvarez got caught in it in Japan in Dream by uh, Kakuno, the guy who kicks the liver with the ball of his foot that I've trained with before, and, and Ryan's trained with him as well. Um, if I snapped him down here, oh, no, no, stay standing. So I do a snap down. The way you snap someone down, I like to bowling ball him. I hit him with the wrist at the neck, and I bowling ball him down to here. So now I got to front hook that position. If I'm standing, I can knee to the side to his head, okay? But I'm not going to get any kind of choke out yet. Now I'm going to get my gable grip and bump that arm across, drive his butt to the cage. Now I can isolate him a little bit and use, uh, see like I'm a tripod, like a pyramid. So it's not just muscular, I'm keeping him pinned in the cage with my footwork and my body weight. Here, and I can dive my head in the hole and I can choke him out standing. That would be the same thing with a guillotine choke. The same thing with crucifix neck crank. Nowadays, you gotta get that blood against the cage. Like John Jones did a Machida, uh, okay? Or plenty of other guys. Overeem did it in Dream 11. Um, you know, a lot of times. Get them against the cage, compress them. So, even standing here, I get snapped down. I can knee him in the head, and maybe he's trying to block. Okay, that's exactly what happened in the recent fight for a next submission. Guy blocked, got that arm across, we're going to that next catch with the team. But right now, I'll keep, keep with the Dave Schultz front headlock. Pull this in, and I'm going to my knee and my head in the hole. Anyone want to feel it before we drill? Okay, uh, we'll get a chance. So down on, the, down on our knees. Guys, we're just going to do it on the knees because we're out of time. Okay, so here, arm through. Like I would, uh, if I would have long arms, like you would for an anaconda choke. I don't get a lot of anaconda. I get some Darces, but not a lot of anacondas. I'm a short, wide guy. Okay, you need longer arms for that stuff. So I like a lot of Cobra neck cranks from here. I get a lot of submissions from here. Dave Schultz front headlock here. I chop this down, pyramid up, and I'm going press. Okay, also keep your weight on top of his neck, his shoulder blades and his neck. See, he may be here. I'm scrolling. I got this. I get that arm through. Now I get this, I chop this here. I just keep my weight on him above his neck, above his shoulder blades, and now I got it. Jitsu, the catcher arm through guillotine. I learned this many years ago from Rosemary Polaris, and um, guys have been doing it a lot, and no one's paying attention. Even Joe Rogan's not calling it in the UFC. It's not a regular arm in guillotine, it's an arm through guillotine on the other side. We've seen alpha male guys, a lot of alpha male guys win with this in scrambles and they know to stay with it and they get it. And um, we've also seen Vitor Belfort's friend, I can't think of his name right now, from Brazil, um, he, his protege, he's gotten two of them in the UFC. So uh, before I hit it, I'll just show, and then we're gonna show 44 ways of getting it. This would be a regular arm and guillotine, which you can't get standing, you gotta have guard or something to elongate them out. This is the arm through guillotine. Okay. So the arm through guillotine means it's all the way through and whatever grip I have, whether it's a normal grip or a palm to palm grip, I have his arm trapped against my ribs. And that's all the difference in the world. Actually, right here, if I did one handed, I could put some pressure on him, but I'm probably not going to tap him. But if I had this through deep, look here, and I had a fight with someone else, I could tap him with one hand. Because I'm tight and I know how to come up. Okay. So. If we were against the cage, he's driving me in, but I managed to maybe knee that liver and boom, shuck like a wrestler, 
I'm gonna get this palm to palm, or I like the three finger G in the bell grip, one of my long time instructors, I pop this through. This is one of the few guillotines I will go to my back on purpose. From here I bump that through, and I jump some kind of F curve. Bam, okay? Now it's not great for stretching them out yet, so I go from a regular to a triangle style, reverse lockdown and find his foot, and I stretch both down and out in Beverly Hills. Okay, one more time. So Ryan Bader did the standing against Vladimir Matyushenko. I've had other videos on this before. He stepped him down in the fight and he started kneeing Matyushenko. Boom, and Matyushenko blocked the first two and then like the third knee, he crossed the center line of block and, and um, Bader just realized it and jumped half there. Big strong guy, he could do that. He didn't put the reverse lockdown, it makes it way better in case he tripods up to alleviate pressure if he knows what he's doing. So, here, when the cage, bang, and knee him, whatever, boom, that arm kind of comes across, I jack it across, and I jump. Bam, okay? Now here I got a lot of pressure. I might tap him like that. Now tripod up a little bit, take some pressure off, yeah. So now, can I tap you? No, it sucks, but not quite, right? So, then I'm gonna throw in a reverse lockdown. I go from here, just a trapper, to like a triangle, I can put my butt out, trip out a little bit. Now I'm out at an angle. I find his foot. I'm gonna stretch both down and down Beverly Hills, and there's quick tap. Now, uh, to shuck the arm across, you need the palm in the palm gable or three finger grip to really bump it across. To get the actual choke, it could be either way. So sometimes you'll see guys just finish this way. But to bump it across, you need this. But sometimes you can just finish that way, so you know. Now, on um, the ground, let's say it's snapping it out. Bam. Now, with the other series, I have a series of attacks on this. Uh, the usual entry for soul choke, I won't go over it today. I'll come in a second. So, we're here, whatever, I got my chin strap, I'm riding on them heavy on the back of the head. If I feel like I can shoot this through the hole, I'm gonna shoot that through the hole and bump it. Here's my setup, shoul, choke, shoul, 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 shoul. He drives into me. Yeah, and I come across here. Okay, I got shin across here. Sorry. That's good. Shin across, knee across, shin shield across, and this across the back. Go to the other side so I can see my knee popping through the hole. Okay. So knee through here, and I don't want them so, like rolling out, so I throw this up, and then the knee shield and this can extend them, and I do a little pulling on the arms to tap. So that's another way of getting it. In the same position, a uh, cool north south escape. Sometimes you can hit this. I do other ones first, but sometimes this reverse shrimp, uh, reversal escaping off bottom works, one of the drills we do uh, to warm up. So if he's here and he starts north, north south choking me, I can do mean stuff like lift his chin up, lift his face. Okay, so you can lift the face, come under the chin, make some space, because he'd be trying to choke me with this hand. So while I'm here, I can then pass both arms to one side. And this bicep inside the elbow is what's going to shuck him. I'm going to branch and shuck out the back. And then look, I'm going to jump right back on the neck, and that arm's already through. Boom, slide to the pole. And there I go. Okay, so let me show that again. That's how I learned this from Paul Harris, and then I've kind of come up with these other ways, uh, these setups. So he'd be choking me, and this would suck if, he, if I already let his grip get too deep on the more south choke. So right away, man, this might be a last ditch out of here. I can't turn. He's got a good base. Because maybe I shove that damn thing up and do a bridge with my hips to get him up. And then I pass, and now I'm gonna shut. So, uh, Johnny, do me a favor. Clap down and choke me a little bit, go. Okay, so there's the reality of that. So last ditch, you shouldn't let the north-south choke get that deep, but if he's already down, by pushing his face and bridging, the legs are what have the power, and that gives you the space to pass that arm both on the same side. Both arms on the same side. And now, tricky setup from the back. Some guys are starting uh, to show, and I might not be as good as, as it yet, so bear with me. Um, and my way might be a little bit different, but I believe Barry Yoshida started showing this, and in Jiu Jitsu Magazine like a year ago, I happened to look at it last night. Um, uh, not Eddie Cummings, but the, uh, the other guy, other good Jiu Jitsu guys winning all this stuff. If you can think of his name, tell me. Um, here, anyway, if I have seatbelt, and he managed to peel and go over his head. If I got seatbelt control, lasso, backpack, and he peels. Or, I got a rear naked. Boom, 
but I don't have a good one. It's not behind, my chin's not over it. So I'm putting it in and he peels it. Two on one defense, peels down and then passes to the other side. I'm gonna take that energy and I build my base to the other side. I build my base with my hands and I use his energy pulling down to try and go towards my own thigh. I'm gonna build my base and come out. I go to my own thigh. He'd be rolling most likely. He's gonna keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, I'm going to switch to a grip and put my knee in the hole, then I stretch him out. Okay, so I went from here for a second, thigh control, to then as we roll over, which most guys are going to do, I then switch to my regular grip or reverse grip if you want it. But I just switched to that one that time. Now I can finish either way, half guard, reverse lockdown, or shin shield across. Um, so let's go to the back again. Okay, so. I got lasso back pack, but he does a good job pinching, he does a good job peels that off, and then gets these strong guy. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna come up here. Ooh, he comes in, bam. Look, I'm in my position, what do I got? I got a half turn, that's good enough so he can't roll out. Then I got a transition, my hips are out, I'm off on the side, I stretch him down and out, and there's my choke. So, from the back, it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting way. Um, let's go slow through again. So I come here, guys, it's important. That's my little variation. If he decided to stay there, or he rolled to the right. So let's, let's try this a couple times. Most guys are not going to do that. If they peel, they're going to be looking to twist and get on top. Okay? So grab that wrist, pull it over. But if he doesn't, if for some reason he just stayed on his butt, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to build my base, come off. I'm going to come here. And then I go, well, okay, you're just going to stay there. I'm going to start going into him, get my choke, boom, and adjust. And so he stayed on his back and then twisted. That's fine, because that's what it might be like. Or, uh, try not to roll first, it's cool because I was more realistic that time. But, if he did just stay, most people are not going to do that. If he did just stay here, I'm going to be coming up, grabbing inside here. And then if he just stay, I'll switch to my grip, I'll approach my foot, I'll come up. I got this, I got squatting, or I got on top. Okay, it doesn't matter where we end up. Sorry, one more time. This time, we peel over. Yeah, so we make it, boom, peel, pass. I'm coming up, but now you're going to go to the right instead of the left. You shouldn't do this, but someone might. Okay, here he's just turning in and keep going. See, he just turned into my chub. Okay, he just turned into it, but I didn't have to go over his back once. Um, so, anyway guys, I thought people would enjoy that. Know the difference between a regular arm and guillotine and an arm through, catcher arm through guillotine. And now you saw four setups. And uh, I think the way it's controlling here on the back, and no matter where he goes, you can stay with him. And you see it doesn't matter. If I get on top, uh, it's fine. As long as you keep this arm through to here, it doesn't really matter what position we end up as long as I either got gravity, body weight, or I can elongate them out. So it wouldn't matter if like I threw them to the side, as long as I kept that rib there, I could tap them here. Okay, I'll try that again. Or I could come into like mount or three-quarter mount. If I had this shut to the side, and he started to feel some pressure, so some people would be floppers and he flops to his side. I can fall, fall, fall here, or come here. Boom. It doesn't matter. As long as you stay with the guy and keep that arm across to the rib so he can't pull the elbow out, that's what matters, guys. Okay? Anyway, I'm Dan Wolfman. Please subscribe. Hope you appreciate it. Thanks. Boom, and I'm tripoding up, whatever, see this space? I'm gonna fill it with my knee, trap him, and extend it.